Hello, everybody. Welcome to this IDKD refresher series on musculoskeletal diseases. My name is Roman Guppenberger. I'm heading the MSK section of the Diagnostic and Interventional Radiology Department in the University Hospital in Zurich. I would like to present you with the following case on a mid-aged man with Southeast Asian origin. And the man had played volleyball and had experienced a hand contusion a few weeks ago, but he's now complaining, especially after exercise, about hyperesthesia and paresthesia in his left hand with a new onset of nocturnal dysesthesia and slight motor deficit of the median nerve. The patient was therefore referred for a conventional x-ray um, to exclude fracture and for an ultrasound to exclude carpal tunnel syndrome to our department. The conventional x-ray of the wrist was actually unremarkable. We could not find any signs of trauma or fracture. While at the ultrasound, um, our resident found a significantly enlarged median nerve underneath the flexor retinaculum with a fascicular um, structure of the nerve. And on Doppler ultrasound, there were normal pulsations in the radial and ulnar arteries. However, there was no increased perfusion of the soft tissues or the median nerve itself. Um, the diameter of the nerve was significantly increased to about seven millimeters, and especially the cross-sectional area was about half a centimeter squared, which would be highly indicative of a carpal tunnel syndrome, according to many publications in the literature. Thinking about carpal tunnel syndrome, there are primary and secondary causes. And among the secondary causes, actually traumatic reasons would uh, be encountered quite frequently. This is a different patient um, who had experienced fracture to his distal forearm. And on MR neurography, we would find edematous changes of a bifid median nerve underneath the flexor retinaculum. Other causes of traumatic lesions to the median nerve would um, be due to luxations of palmar ossicles, like in this case, um, luxation of the lunate into the palmar manus. You can nicely identify this on the lateral view with this typical tossed cup sign. This patient also underwent MR neurography, where we would find edematous changes of the nerve, also on the coronal T2 fat set image. And we were also interested in the nerve integrity of this patient and performed diffusion tensor imaging with the tractography, where we would not find any significant disruption of the nerve tracts. Diffusion tensor imaging may also be an interesting modality when you uh, want to rule out a carpal tunnel syndrome. We did a study uh, where we um, found that the fractional anisotropy and apparent diffusion coefficient of the median nerve at the flexor retinaculum are age dependent in healthy individuals. FA decreases and ADC increases with age. However, both values were significantly different to a cohort with carpal tunnel syndrome patients where FA ranged significantly higher and ADC significantly lower compared to carpal tunnel syndrome patients. Other reasons for carpal tunnel syndrome-like complaints would be space-occupying lesions in the carpal tunnel, like this polylobulated ganglion cyst, which induces um, pressure on the median nerve. And this is a nice case of the literature. Other space-occupying lesions may occur in the nerve itself, like um, this fibrolipomatous hamartoma. Actually, if you see, if you have a look at the ultrasound image, uh, this would very, very nicely fit to that diagnosis um, where we see those enlarged fascicles of the nerve and an overall enlarged, enlarged um, nerve caliber. We've also seen cases of fibrolipomatous hamartomas on both hands, like in this patient. Um, however, this was not the case in, in the patient I'm discussing. The patient actually came back as the symptoms did not subside, but they rather increased. And the ultrasound was repeated by a senior physician of our department who then identified not only an enlarged 
median nerve, but also an enlarged ulnar nerve at the carpal tunnel. And in addition to that, there were also enlarged digital branches in the palmar manus. The patient then went on to MR neurography and we could confirm those ultrasound findings where we would see all the nerves of the distal forearm enlarged with increased signal intensity on T2 fat set images. On the T1 weighted images, you would find still intact perineural fat planes um, which did not show any pathology around the nerves. The same findings we could see at the cubital level with an enlarged median nerve and enlarged ulnar nerve increased in signal intensity on T2 fat set. And again, the perineural fat planes were preserved on T1 weighted images. Also on a coronal T2 fat set, we could see those long segment um, enlarged nerves with increased signal intensity. In addition to pathologic nerve changes, we would also find edematous changes of some muscles, like in this case, the flexor uh, carpi ulnaris muscle with an edematous change of the muscle belly at the myotendinous junction. And after IV contrast, we would find significant contrast uptake of all the nerves uh, that were also increased on T2 fat set images. The symptoms did not only present um, at the forearm, but the patient also experienced uh, problems in his lower leg, which is why we also performed MR neurography of the lower leg. And we would also find fascicular patterns with increased signal intensity and contrast uptake of this uh, common perineal nerve in the popliteal. The patient therefore underwent surgery and all those classic entrapment sites were released, the ulnar nerve canal about the elbow, the loge de gouillon at the wrist and also the carpal tunnel at the wrist. And uh, histopathology of course was uh, being taken and we would find a chronic granulomatous neuritis with scarcely scattered mycobacteria under the microscope in this specific fight fixation. In this magnification view, you can see a very small mycobacterium. And here you see the granulomatous inflammatory infiltrate with some peripheral nerve tissue. In addition to those histopathology findings, the patient developed more patchy discolorations and hypo pigmentation of his skin, which was also noted uh, by the clinicians. So taking all these findings together, this is actually an interesting case of a peripheral neuritis due to Mycobacterium lepre, or Morbus Hansen, as it is called. Um, We're dealing with a posse bacillary form and a borderline tuberculoid form in this patient. The diagnosis was, of course, confirmed by an ELISA test and by a mycobacteria PCR, which was highly positive for mycobacterium lepre. As we've discuss, discussed, differential diagnoses of carpal tunnel syndromes would be secondary forms like a trauma, like a tumor, ganglia, or other space occupying lesions in the carpal tunnel, or maybe a fibrolipomatous hamartoma um, of the median nerve itself, especially if you have an ultrasound image that looks like the one that we've seen in this patient. Hope you enjoyed this case. If you're interested in further literature, um, please have a look at these publications that I also used for my presentation. And with this, I leave you uh, with best wishes from Zurich.